order. Questions for oral answer. Mr. Yip Hon Wang. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, may I have your permission to answer questions one and two together? Yes, please proceed. Sir, my response will also cover the matters raised in a separate question, number 4598, filed by Ms. Ng Ling Ling, scheduled for a subsequent sitting. I would invite the member to seek clarifications today if need be. And if the question has been addressed, it may not be necessary for her to proceed with the question for a future sitting. Sir, there are different methods of funding for healthcare institutions. For various reasons, the asymmetry of information between doctors and patients, the moral hazard of insurance, the anxiety of patients and their loved ones, healthcare is highly susceptible to funding wastage. Better funding models can reduce such wastage without affecting service quality. For example, funding by workload, such as the number of procedures, surgeries, scans, hospital bed days, does not in itself incentivize hospitals to be more targeted and efficient in delivering healthcare services, because all activities will be funded anyway. Bundled payments, which are commonly practiced around the world, help to remove what are known as disease-level operational inefficiencies. This means that hospitals get funded per care episode, rather than based on a detailed breakdown of workload. We had implemented the bundled payments pilots, which allowed institutions to generate cost savings, for instance, by facilitating earlier transitions from acute hospitals to community hospitals where appropriate. Patients have varying degrees of disease severity, some requiring more interventions than others. So bundled payment rates are set at an average to cover the total cost of all care episodes. This provides an incentive for the hospital to be more efficient. Another model is pay, pay for performance, which provides financial incentives for clusters to perform well in key priority areas. Our pilot projects delivered positive results, leading to better health outcomes without compromising care. However, these mechanisms, such as bundled payments by care episode, do not in themselves incentivize the reduction of what is known as population level wastage, i.e. some patients should not become sick in the first place where preventive steps could have been taken in homes or communities to keep the residents healthy before they become patients. Capitation funding aims to incentivize healthcare providers to place a greater emphasis on preventive care. Under this funding model, healthcare providers are assigned a population base and are paid a predetermined amount per resident under their charge. They will thus be encouraged to incur a lower cost by intervening upstream and early to keep the patient healthy, knowing that it will require them to spend more to treat or cure patients in hospital after they fall sick. This method of funding is commonly practiced around the world as well. Different methods of funding for healthcare, be it bundled payments or capitation, if designed and implemented well, will not negatively affect the quality of service at hospitals. The, the, if wastage and unnecessary procedures can be removed, it will improve the effectiveness um, of our healthcare workers as well as their well-being. It will reduce the financing burden of healthcare and can improve the level of service. From the 1st of April 2023, we transited to a capitation funding model for our three healthcare clusters. Each has a population of about 1.5 million residents assigned under them. And each cluster will be paid funding rates based on the age bands of their residents. The rates are designed so that there is no reduction and in fact a slight increase to the cluster budgets as compared to the previous years. As our population gets older, more residents will require higher capitation rates and the clusters will correspondingly receive higher budgets. We maintain a flexible system where residents can continue to choose which hospitals they would like to go to and need not go to only the hospitals from the cluster that they are assigned to. Transfer payments between the clusters will be made to take this into account. 
With capitation funding, MOH sets priority areas and key indicators for the immediate, medium and long term. While the public health care clusters have the mandate and operational flexibility to decide the resource allocation across their institutions and services. These key indi indicators were outlined in the white paper on Healthier SG. Healthcare clusters will take into account various factors when deciding how to allocate their funds. These factors may include the cost of operations incurred by various healthcare institutions under their charge, the mix of residents that they serve, and the performance management system under that cluster. It does not mean that the cluster has to pass through the funding mechanism in the form of capitation funding to their individual healthcare institutions, which may not be practical. However, with capitation at the cluster level, there is a strong incentive for the clusters to invest more in primary and preventive care and to work with all community partners to help their residents stay healthy or delay disease progression. We should expect many more initiatives in the preventive care space in the coming years. Thank you, sir. Mr. Yip Hon Wing. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the SMS uh, for its responses to my PQs. I have two SQs to each of the PQs. First, under the capitation model, will there be a system in place to review the exceptional cases where patients outlive their prognosis or if their illness do not follow through the usual trajectory and ensure that care is not denied for these cases? Second, given the rapid advancement in technology, especially in medical devices and pharmacology, how often are the care protocols reviewed such that the capitation model and formulas are kept relevant with the most cost-effective treatments available? Third, under the capitation model, will physicians be less incentivized to think out of the box to treat patients with complex clinical conditions as it may require costlier treatments? And lastly, while it is part of the plan in Healthier SG to stick with one GP, will capitation restrict patient choices for tertiary care as they will now be covered under a regional area and served by a particular hospital? Thank you. Dr. Jano Puticherry. So I thank uh, Mr. Yip for his uh, four SQs. Um, the first was whether there would be an issue around exceptional cases that don't follow the usual trajectory for diseases. And the, and the short answer is that this is not a problem. While uh, the rates are set on the basis of a mean, because they are covering a large population base, it does take into account the great variance on an individual basis um, around disease and disease progression, where some uh, patients will do very well, short stays, minimal, minimal intervention, and some will require a lot more. And that has been factored in to the calculations around the funding mechanism and does not change the way in which the individual care decisions are made. Will care protocols be reviewed? Yes. Uh, capitation is a funding mechanism at a large population level. It does not remove the various other governance mechanisms that are in place across our healthcare system from the professional boards, the licensing boards, um, the interface with research and academia, and the clinical review processes, all of these will continue to review care protocols to make sure the care that's delivered is entirely appropriate. Uh, Mr. Yip also asks if there is less incentive to innovate and think out of the box. The answer is no. Um, at the personal level, at individual level, of the clinicians will of course continue to be driven by their professional desire to provide the best possible care, whether it is following a standard protocol well demonstrated, or whether it is looking for innovative ways to deal with unusual and exceptional circumstances. At the system level, the idea is to put in place mechanisms that drive innovation and thinking to be able to derive efficiencies, but more importantly, better care through the resources that we have. And as I explained in my uh, main answer, the answer to his last question, it does not restrict the choice of where a resident or a patient can receive their care from. They can access care services from across the three clusters, even if they've been assigned as part of a population base. For one cluster, MOH will work with the cluster and the administrative um, side of the healthcare system to do back-end transfer payments so that residents don't have to worry about this and uh, they will have that choice of where to receive their healthcare maintained. Ms. Ng Ling Ling. 
Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I just have uh, two uh, sub a supplementary question for SMS. Thank you for the explanation on how a uh, capitation grant will be implemented. My first question is that if capitation uh, is a method of an, uh, encouraging uh, less wastage and more preventive of primary care, how is uh, MOH monitoring that clusters, even with operational flexibility given, is actually uh, channeling more of their resources towards primary and preventive care? Uh, the second question is uh, towards the health outcomes that the clusters are asked to work towards for the funding. Can uh, SMS give an example of how uh, uh, a cluster will be incentivized to shift uh, their capitation funding towards where you know, we are directionally moving preventive and primary care rather than what they are doing today? It could be just for volume. Thank you. Dr. Chanel Puticherry. So I thank uh, Ms. Sung for the questions. Um, for, on the first, how will we know that they are indeed channeling resources to primary and uh, preventive care? Well, we work very closely with the clusters on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with the clinicians at all levels um, of our healthcare ecosystem. The healthcare services have to interface with MOH on licensing decisions, on regulatory decisions, on the provision of resources. And so we, we will indeed have a very close feel of where manpower, resources, and effort across our healthcare system um, is being um, asserted. And we'll then know whether or not these measures around funding and around governance are resulting in the operational changes and the service delivery changes that we are hoping for. And we will pay, pay very close attention to this. She asked for an example. I'm a little hesitant because the whole idea is indeed to um, uh, incentivize the clinicians and the, the service delivery teams to be able to think through what works best for their residents um, and their uh, clinical service teams uh, and their operational model. But a hypothetical example, let's say something like diabetes, um, if you wanted to institute um, some particular care around diabetic eye disease, for example. You may choose to do this centrally and through the eye center, through the ophthalmologists, um, or you may choose to do this on a screening basis and perhaps increase the capability at the level of the polyclinics in the GPs to be able to detect this early. Or you could potentially even go into the community and explain how having good care around your diabetes can prevent eye disease from happening in the first place. And clearly, what we hope would be that the uh, uh, clusters and the professionals would do more of the third and, and prioritize the third, um, and we should see that type of approach happening. So that is an example. I don't know that that is the best example, but I think the examples and the specific clinical initiatives need to come from the professionals and the care teams that are involved. Mr. Gelman, why? Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I have one question for the SMS. Uh, will the capitation payment include all charges that uh, the GP will charge the patient, meaning uh, the capitation payment will include both the consultation and the drug cost of each visit by the uh, patient? Or is the drug cost uh, excluded? Sir, I thank Mr. Leong for his question, but that is not what capitation payment is, uh, which is capitation is a mechanism to bundle the budget that is allocated at the cluster level. Uh, what he is asking about are the charges that are made available at the patient level and potentially the subsidies associated with those charges and to offset those charges. Uh, those are very, very different issues. So when we talk about capitation, it is about how we take the budget that is available for healthcare and decide what are uh, the allocations to each of the clusters, what are the allocations to each of the priority areas or the diseases or the care models um, at, a, at, a, at a big picture level. Uh, so I, the question that he's asking, in a way, doesn't apply to the issue of capitation funding. A very brief SQ, please, Mr. Leong. And then we'll move on. 
Uh, yes, Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the SMS then? I think the, the issue that Singaporeans are most interested in is, I don't know whether the MOH already got conclusion on that, is how will the patients be charged under uh, the outpatient patients will be, char will, will be charged under the new uh, healthcare SG uh, scheme? Uh, so I thank Mr. Leong for his question. Uh, the charging model for individual patients under, your health, under healthier SG is not what uh, we are, is not what we are doing with capitation. Capitation is about how we assign a budget to the clusters. What he's asking about is how will patients be charged when they go and see their GP, whether you have a healthier SG uh, program or whether you are going for a fee-for-service. Um, that is not uh, what we are talking about when we mean capitation funding, which is a way of deciding how to assign the MOH budget to clusters, to hospitals, and to different services. I appreciate that he may indeed be reflecting the concern of uh, resident citizens about how they are charged, um, I believe those issues have been discussed at some length and are available in a fairly transparent uh, and documented way at a number of sites, but perhaps today is not the place or the time to debate them. 